name Hello. is Gloria. My name is um, Alex. I'm Joel. And we're all BME students graduating this semester. And our project has to do with electrically conductive adhesives. Loud. First of all, our project is specifically characterizing electrically conductive adhesives for use with small wearable technology. And our objectives for this project were to develop a selection process for isotropic ECAs for use with polymer substrate, characterize the performance of ECAs by performing shear strength tests and flexural bend testing, and then verify the conductivity tests with the tests we took from the ASTM standard. At the end of that, we'll rank the adhesives and um, be able to choose an adhesive or give a recommendation for an adhesive. Our minimum criteria is to have a resistivity of less than 0 0.001 ohm centimeters, cure time of less than one hour, cure temperature of 150 degrees Celsius or less, and pot life uh, greater than one hour and a shelf life of over a year at least. And we tested four adhesives. Uh, so our biomedical engineering motivation for this project was that wearable patches are a very big part of the medical industry right now and they have an increasingly high CAGR, um, meaning they're going to become a big part of the market. Some of the applications are sensing hydration levels, heart rate, uh, blood O2 levels and blood sugar levels, especially with the prevalence of diabetes in the United States. Uh, there are also additional features such as wireless transmission. Uh, with that wireless transmission, we can send information to a network or a cloud, we can integrate devices together. And uh, the great thing about what we're developing is that it integrates with currently existing technology. It can work with sensors that are already in the market, that are already FDA approved, and by simply changing the substrate, by changing the way that the patches uh, have a certain housing, we can make them uh, better, make them more flexible. So our FDA considerations, as I said, a lot of this stuff is already approved, and it's all uh, just sensors that are already on the market and already used in medical devices with rigid patches. Uh, so an example of that would be uh, some class two devices, such as the DXH product code, that's for cardiovascular activity. But of course, there's uh, blood sugar activity, there's hydration level, and there's other sensors as well. Uh, our connectivity test uh, used the SEM because the connectivity test was inclusive. Uh, basically, it involved taking two stainless steel coupons with an adhesive in between them, then measuring the resistivity between those two coupons. Uh, then, because it was inconsistent, the <laughs> Because the readings were inconsistent and because the readings were way off from what we were expecting, we did a failure analysis of the sound. We were able to find that uh, adhesive A had an uneven distribution of silver particles, the adhesive B had a formation of layers and areas of void without uh, conductive material, and adhesive C had the formation of voids as well, um, and adhesive D had just had the lack of strength to hold the whole coupons together. We did on two different types of um, substrates, and there are, three, there are three different types of test failures. Um, two of the adhesives, A and C, had the strongest shear strength for both of the tests, um, for both of the uh, substrates. And overall, um, B and C, they also displayed the lowest shear strength for both of the tests. Um, so overall, B, A and C have the highest shear strength, uh, B and D have the lowest. In our final set of tests, we ran the flexural tests. We tested the four adhesives. Uh, we made samples demonstrated here. And then our final results, three of the adhesives ultimately failed flexural testing. They broke the circuit, which means they didn't uh, maintain the circuit throughout the flex. Only one of them did, but they, at the end of the 10th cycle, uh, the circuit did break, or the resistance increased it, excuse me. Resistant increase it, but it didn't fail. So we recommend that as our overall adhesive for flex. This is our ranking chart. Uh, in conclusion, we can use adhesive D in terms of flex test, but if you wanted, I mean, it's application specific. So if you need only a low shear strength and a good amount of flex, you can always use adhesive D. In our future work, we're going to redesign the conductivity test to obtain all your resistivity results and. Um, do something with search electronics and maybe change the design of the flex. And that concludes our presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.